Good morning. I'm going on my morning walk. It's Monday morning. For a lot of you, this is uh, the time that the weekend ended. And maybe for some of you, you've been alone and you're actually glad Monday's starting. For others of you, you may have narcs at work. And this may be the time you dread to get to work or whatever. So I'm here to tell you that uh, having, uh, having the freedom and having uh, the narcissist out of my life has made it a lot easier to have Mondays or weekends without that person. Um, and having somebody in my life uh, after 19 months of waiting and not dating, um, things are good. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I think I got a little bit of a cold or something. But I think um, I want to share with you guys today um, something. It's a, it's a w way of thinking about uh, narcissistic abuse and letting you guys know that it uh, 90 percent of it is not you. Okay, it's it's them. And uh, good morning, Tammy. Um, I was just thinking, there's so many, there's so many YouTube videos now on, uh, on, on YouTube. There's so many videos about this now that there's so much education out there that, I mean, if you just watch these videos enough, uh, by ASSC direct, by understanding narcissists, uh, by thrive after abuse, um, God, there's a bunch of other ones seems like uh, one out of every four people that's been through this is making a video on YouTube now. That's not that high, but it just seems like it. But that's good. That's really good that we get it out there. <clears throat> uh, books, if you read a book like Psychopath Free and then watch these videos, you know, what, what it did, it did, what it did for me was it, it helped get me to see the right perspective of it. And I'm going to give you guys an analogy today that I want you to take to heart to just let you know that, man, if you can just get away from these people, that's like, that's like most of your battle, just getting out of a relationship with one. Now, if they're family members, you may not be able to completely get away, but there's things you can do with Gray Rock. Look up uh, Gray Rock, Gray Rocking. On YouTube, there's videos on Gray Rocking. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to give you guys my little lesson today, my little analogy. Actually, I'm going to wait for there's, so there's a few more people that come on. Hey, Rose, Rose Petal. I like that name. Hey, Margaret. Um, I just wanted to give you guys one example today and then just answer questions previous to then. Um, <clears throat> had a uh, great weekend. I got to spend the weekend with somebody who wasn't a narcissist. And when you spend some time with somebody that's a giver, like you, if you're a giver, it's magical. And I don't recommend a relationship though, right after you've been in a relationship with a narcissist because there's part of you that was somewhat attracted to the narcissist and maybe didn't see the red flags. So before you get back into a relationship, this is what I did. I would recommend recognizing those flags. And for a lot of us, it's reconnecting with our, um, our intuition, our gut, if you will, trusting your gut. And once you're able to do that, then things, <coughs> excuse me, things come pretty easily where things come, I was trying to describe it to somebody, but it's almost like when you can trust your gut, you don't think about it too much. Like you don't overthink it. Now at first you got to overthink it because you got to kind of establish a new pattern of thinking. But once you, once you get it, once it snaps into place, it's so much, uh, all these fears and everything, a lot of you are living in fear. The narcissist needs you to live in fear for you to be around them so that they can control you and dominate you. You're much easier to control when you're afraid, afraid of making the wrong move, afraid of saying the wrong thing, afraid that they're going to be mad at you, 
afraid that they're going to abandon you or leave you. See, that's not normal in relationships. You may think, I mean, after a while, it kind of seems normal. But if you're feeling like you're trapped with somebody, like you're in prison, and you can't make a move until you know what they're going to do, that's not a good relationship. And, you, and what I'm telling you is that you can get out, and there are relationships out there that are completely opposite of that, that build you up, that make you feel good about yourself. That's the number one thing, you know. If I don't feel good about somebody now, this, I, I wasn't always this way. But now, if, if somebody, if I'm, not in good, if I'm not getting good vibes from somebody, I just, uh, I just kind of back away from them. And that could be a lot of different ways. It could be maybe I don't call them back. Maybe I don't uh, initiate um, getting together with them. You know, I just kind of slowly back away. You know, it doesn't have to be a uh, traumatic. Uh, I'm not going to be with you anymore because you give me a bad vibe. No, I just kind of back away. And I study people more. I don't, I used to be more apologetic. A lot. I used to be more forgiving. And I used to let people, I used to just give people the benefit of the doubt. But in, a, in kind of an unhealthy way where I would just let them, I don't say walk all over me, but I would let them. I give them a pass, and a lot of them didn't deserve a pass. And so for so for a while, I had all these friends, but they weren't really friends. A lot of them were uh, basically using me, or I mean, I was very self-deprecating, you know, just very, uh, you know, making fun of myself, and like I always put people here, and then I was here, you know, I wasn't really as good as them, and all that, but. Um, so if some of you are like that, what I'll tell you is that what I was able to do is I was able to see things more realistically and recognize the flags. And now I'm only around people. I only allow people in my life. Like I didn't feel like I had control over that, but I do. I, that's one thing I have control over. I can't control what people do around me, but I can control what I do around people and who I invite back into my life and who who I hang around. Now for a while that felt lonely because instead of having, you know, 50 people around me that I would just let into my life, no boundaries, no, you know, just come on in and abuse me or whatever, because I didn't know the difference. Now I've got maybe five people that I've let come across that fence, that boundary now, because I, I have boundaries. And those are the people that I allow into my life. And because I only allow five people and I'm not scatterbrained with 50 people, I can develop a closer relationship with those people because I know that they're good. I can trust my gut now. I can trust that I'm making the right. I, and, and it's not that hard. I, I mean, it took some training, but now it's, it's almost on autopilot because my main barometer, my main gauge, if you will, is do I feel good around this person? Do I get any red flags? Do I get any something where what they say and what they do, if they say they're gonna be over at four and they're over at 4.15, okay, maybe that person's just late but everything else falls into place. But is there something that they said that they're gonna do and then they do the opposite or they don't do it? Because part of it is, um, when you live in fear, you have a mentality, a scarcity mentality. You, you believe that nothing else better is going to come along, like this is it. What I'll tell you is you can live in the law of abundance where that's where you don't live in fear and that's where you feel like there's opportunities at every turn. There's new people that are going to come into your life. This isn't it. You can do so much better. That's where, that's a good place to be in. And of course, like I was saying, I wasn't always there. But it is so much better now. So let's see what some of you are saying. Okay, Chastity has a question. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Jacqueline. Hey, Kim. Hey, Tammy. Oh. Okay, so question. 
if you're coming out of an abusive narcissistic relationship, she, she was married for six years, can you recommend specifically any books or videos by name that will help? I still love him and I'm not taking him back, but I need some support to get through this. I believe knowledge is power and I am breaking the cycle. Okay, so a good book to read. Your first book is Psychopath Free. And the videos that I first uh, looked at uh, were videos by uh, Dana Morningstar, Thrive After Abuse. That's exactly what I did. I watched all her videos. She's got a very um, warm, kind of like a good friend feel to her. Um, and she's real. I mean, that's her. She's she's the same in person as she is off, you know, um, on camera. So that's what I did. I mean, if I, those are the two things that I did. Um, and there's another book I would read, the Boundaries book. I've read that, but I read that like years ago. Didn't take it to heart, but now I was open to it. And then, of course, one thing I did, and not everybody does this, but one thing I did was I would participate in the support groups, but instead of, so I would post like days that I had, right? Text messages that I got with the narc's name blacked out. But I started, I started commenting more on other people's posts because I had more experience than them. I had more, if I had 30 days of gray rock, I would post to somebody that was trying to go through it. They were brand new. So I would give that, that empathy that I had for the narcissist, I couldn't use it for the narcissist anymore, you know? So I would uh, put it, pour it into the group. Yeah, I know they weren't real relationships per se. It wasn't somebody I physically knew. But the good thing is in the support group with Facebook is that you can have these, you can help other people with a comment or something. You can just like like their, uh, you know, if you don't want to comment, just like or um, love, you know, how you can comment on Facebook, love their post. So I put attention, see what happens is, is if we put too much attention onto ourselves, I believe, like for me, I got into a cycle where I was, I was, uh, like I was stuck. I couldn't get out of the uh, self-pity and like, oh my God, everything's terrible. And when you pour into other people, you don't feel alone because we feel very alone when we break out of it, when we break a, uh, when we go no contact and we break out of, a, of an abusive cycle because now we're kind of like, what do I do now? Because we're used to being told what to do. So I was pouring back into the groups. And when I did that, I was able to take my focus off of me, help other people. And I didn't feel alone. And I mean, I kind of saw that there were people that were worse off than me. I mean, not that that makes me feel better, but in a way it was like, wow, here I am feeling sorry for myself. And this person's going through something even worse. I mean, people looked at me, you know, I would, you, know, I got, you got six years of a, an abusive relationship and I had 20. So people go, wow, this guy, my God, I only lost six years of my life. This guy lost 20. So, so if you were, you know, if you helped me when I was new, you'd say, wow, this guy is really going through a lot. So that's kind of how support groups work. That's how good support groups work. Like this one is that we encourage people to not only post things that's going, things that are going on with their lives, but also to help other people in the groups. Um, and again, if you don't want to comment yet, you can just like, and a lot of you are already doing this, obviously. You can like something, and then maybe you comment like a week later. And then maybe you develop a few key relationships with people, you see the same people. And Facebook knows that. They, the Facebook knows with the algorithms that they say, oh, well, you've commented on this person's post. Here's something else this person's going through. And so it's really incredible the uh, technology we have with regards to support groups and how that works. Now, as far as loving him, <laughs> I will say that um, 
I mean, I love my XN as I would a normal human being. I love everybody. Some people are, have sick, you know, some people have sick sicknesses that they can't heal. So that's the kind of love I have for her now. But I would tell you that the, uh, the love that you may have, I had to see that mine was, was with an illusion I had. I had this, I was in love with a hologram. I was in love with something that wasn't real. So it, it took me a while to see that. So, so that's what I would say to your uh, comment there about being in love with him. So, Ronnie says, hi Josh, need to hear this today. No contact and it's been, text, he's been texting me. Well, no comment means you don't get a text in, so block the texting. And if you do get a text in, don't read it. Delete it, don't read it, delete it. I promise you it's not anything of importance. They're gonna make it seem like it's important. Oh, I sent you that text. Like you're gonna have repercussions and it's gonna be worse. And you didn't read my text and just delete it. I promise you it's not gonna be anything important. Ellen says hi. Stacy says, I feel like I have walls up with people that are sky high. Yeah, the feel does a feeling pass. Yeah, it does. Because you're you're off balance now. So what you're doing is you're going from letting everybody in to now kind of setting boundaries and asserting yourself. Because you've been wounded, you know, you gotta protect yourself. And now you're seeing this. I gotta protect myself. So then you'll you'll go overboard. And it, it's common. You just kinda gotta you gotta feel it out. So instead of having no fence, now you've got us you know, fence along the Mexico border. It's like, you know, 12 feet tall and you're, you're not letting anybody in, but, but you will, you'll, you'll begin to uh, kind of scale the fence down and you'll put a gate on the fence and you'll be able to, that's the thing, you'll build a gate on that, on that real half, uh, tall fence that you don't let anyone in. And you'll begin to say, okay, it's okay to let this person in. Okay, it's okay to let this other person in, but, <laughs> You're gonna build another fence before that, at least this is what I did. And so you put that person kind of in a timeout zone, kind of in a, in a waiting area, and then you observe them even more to see if you wanna let them in. So, yeah, I was gonna say something else, but. Uh, Nicole says, what if you feel great at times, but terrible at other times? They can be the absolute best person and absolute worst. Yeah, well, you know, when they when you feel like when you feel really good around them and then feel like crap, you're being manipulated. You're being um, set up. So, I would tell you that it's best just to break off contact with them and get to a uh, like a homeostasis state where you're normal, where you're just homeostasis is actually in balance because this this kind of stuff. Although it kind of feels good when it's up here, part of the abuse is, is bringing you down. And it can go down really far. And then if they leave you before you've, they brought you up, <laughs> that you, you can stay down here for a long time. It's, it's, it's not fun. It, it's kind of like, do I eat uh, the sugary ice cream cone and feel like buzzed and really, you know, wow, sugar high? Or do I eat the uh, pot roast that I know is healthier for me that's going to sustain my energy and keep me even? And you want to go that way. You want to go the healthier way. <clears throat> Kim says, Hi, you are helping me during my first big holiday. Awesome. Yeah, Easter was yesterday. Some people got triggered because they they were saying they saw normal, they saw families dressed up and, you know, going to church in their little dresses and, you know, and we're thinking, oh man, my relationship is terrible. I don't have, look, a lot of people, you're just seeing them from the outside. You know, so, oh, I could say so many things on this. Okay. Whose videos did you say? Uh, ASSC Direct. It's A and then the letters SSC 
it's all together ASST space direct that's a video write that one down um, thrive after abuse um, more intellectually is a video guy about, got by a guy named understanding narcissist and there's a bunch of others too but um, oh uh, peace and harmony I think that's her name she's got a, a lot of good ones and she makes about three or four videos a day uh, she goes hey it's a peace and harmony uh, I wanted to tell you about the, the, the. she's just like She's, she's like all, all energy and she's very matter-of-factly about it Good morning Jennifer Kimber says without him by my side I was finally able to enjoy a holiday yeah isn't it crazy look they have a vested interest in making you not happy I know it sounds weird but that person that you thought you were really close to they want to see you upset. They want to see you unhappy. There's all kinds of reasons for that. We're not going to go into it today. Manny says, I only discovered I was 16 years married to an ARC last year after uh, he split. And therapy's still analyzing the pain and hurt. Yeah, and see, the thing is, <laughs> we like to put it all on them. But what eventually, and some of you aren't ready for this yet, but... 90% of it's them, okay? Then the other 10% we got to work on. That's very oversimplified, but for, for illustrative purposes, that's kind of where we're at. So that 10% that we work on after we get rid of them, you can't be in a relationship with them. A lot of therapists aren't going aren't gonna, to like just tell you to get the hell out of the relationship. A lot of therapists are going to try to help you work on the relationship and work to be together. 90% of it's them. Get them out of there. Okay. So the 10% that's left, remember, it's mostly them. The 10% that's left is stuff from your childhood. It's stuff from the past. It's traumas that you've been through. It's ways that you've adapted. It's defense mechanisms that you don't know about, that you do, and you think, no, oh, that's kind of unhealthy. Or maybe now you're just starting to see, why was I attracted to this guy or gal? So now you're starting to see it. And that's the part where you go to therapy for. That's the part where you watch videos and you learn. You learn, okay, you learn how to spot other people. But it's not the other people that you got to worry about. It's not, it, what, not worry about, work on, okay? It's the things that you have control over. You can totally control how you think of things, how you see people when somebody, like you can watch other people. And you can't control them. You can't make them love you. You can't make them be this way. But when they say they love you, you can get closer to them or move away from them or stay the same. You have control over that. And and if they if they say they love you, but they don't show the actions that they don't that they love you, like they're totally acting the opposite. That's where you fine tune your like perceptive abilities and how you process things. That's where you say. Okay, this person says they love me, so they're saying one thing, but they're not acting as a loving person at all. They're being abusive, they're, they're saying things to hurt me. And so, and you get to this mentality or this state of being where you're able to walk away from them. And a lot of us won't do that. A lot of us have these abandonment issues, these fear of abandonment, where when we get somebody who likes us, we latch onto them. And we put all these emotions and all these things and all our happiness and we let we, we say, well, he's going to make me happy or he hurt me or he did this or he did that or she did this. And when you get healthy, what you learn is that other people just do shit. And then it's up to us to decide what we do with it. We can move away from other people. And what's funny is what's funny is, is you can have a normal, healthy person who's kind of abusive to you. And what I mean by that is that they can, they can, um, what I mean by it is that they can, we can be with somebody who's totally healthy and they can do something to us like they're tired or hungry and both or whatever. And then they say something mean to us. And because we're healthy, when they say that to us, 
we say, you know what, I didn't appreciate that comment that you said to me two hours ago where you said this. Now, a normal healthy person would say, hey, I, I, you know, I'm really, I apologize for that. I was, I was hungry. I shouldn't have said that. Let me make it up to you, okay? If we're not normal and healthy, we wouldn't have stated that. We would have let that abuse continue. We would have let them continue to treat it. So we allow them to do that. And the person who's normal and healthy, maybe would see that and be like, eh, that person, they're not right or something. I guess the main thing I'm saying is we attract into our lives. We allow the people into our lives that, uh, to stay there. And it's us. It's not them. We allow those people. Like, like if we start stating things, I'll give you an example, okay? And this is an example not with narcissists, but with my children. For a while, um, after I went through a divorce, so I would spend every minute I could with my kids. And my daughter would have things going on, and there would be something going on, and I would, I would just say, okay, honey, well, I'm here for you, you know? Like I was... I was placing a lot of emphasis on my children. I, I, you know, instead of loving my ex, I poured a lot of love into my kids and, of course, into these groups, but more so with people that are around me. And so as I started to get healthier, the kids noticed I was happier around them. So when I did spend time with them, it was great. I mean, you know, we had a good time and they felt good and I learned built ways to build myself up and I was happier myself and I was happier around them. What eventually started happening was I started attracting other people in my life. Like I, was, I started dating and then going on, um, you know, developing other relationships with other, uh, with a couple of women, and there's one woman in particular now. And because I was doing that, what was happening was my kids, when they did spend time with me, they didn't go in their rooms and just hang out and, um, you know, with their friends or whatever on, on, online they would spend more time with me because I didn't have as much free time to give them. So because, but one, but now they recognize that when they do have time with dad, they need to make that special. They need to make that time with them now. So that's kind of like the, my little mac, my little micro experiment or my little micro de development. Um, it's kind of how I see things with people now where you become more valuable around the people around you when you're healthier. And they recognize too that, hey, you know, there's only so much time and they want to spend that time with you. So instead of, now instead of me chasing after my kids to go do stuff with me, now they're more, they're more chasing after me, you know? And when they say they got other things going on, it doesn't bother me because I'm healthier now and I've got other things going on too. So I don't, like, I don't need them as much to feel good because for a while, I think I was, I was relying on my kids, you know, well, they, and so, so because I did the work on myself, because I developed my own self-love, that's a big thing to do is in recovery. I didn't need anybody. And when I did have relationships with people, when I did go out, when I did spend time with my kids, when I did spend time with my new significant other, it was, um, it was in a very good place. I was in a very good place. And so it's, it's almost a, an attraction where people want to be around you because you are in a good place and you don't have as much time. I don't know if that makes sense. So, more Josh, how can you work on and develop an abundance mindset? Um, you can do that through uh, meditation. There's abundance meditations, I believe. One of the things I did was positive affirmations. And if you type in YouTube, abundance mentality, abundance mindset, there's ways of just looking at things. There's ways of uh, thinking about things. See, a lot of us here, we just feel like, oh, the narc is it. That's the one person that understands me. That Well, yeah, they understand you. They understand you to abuse you. <laughs> they have a vested interest. But you, so you, you know, you want to know that there's other people out there. There's lots of other people out there, other healthier people. I mean, look, how many people we have on here? There's probably going to be a thousand people that watch this video. Do you think maybe there's women and men that watch this video that if they got healthier, they would want to get together? I mean, not that I'm encouraging dating in the groups. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying that there's a lot of other people out there that are in the same mindset as you that want to get healthier. 
I, I mean, it's just, there's just so many people out there. And all you need to, I mean, look, you don't really need anybody. See, that's when you know you're ready to date. That's, that's my little secret. When you don't, when you get to the point where you've developed self-love, when you, when you don't need to necessarily date, when you say, you know what, I'm going to be fine on my own. If this is the way it's going to be, it's going to be. I'm happy where I'm at. And you genuinely, genuinely mean that. That's when it's okay to date. That's when you're actually going to get into a healthy relationship. So, okay, so the example I was going to give you guys earlier. Um, okay, so let me tell you a story. I'm going to give you a little analogy. Let me see what time we got here without flipping you guys on my phone and look at my watch. Okay. Okay, so we got, okay. So I'm going to give you guys a little story. And this is the title of this video, so I'm going to go back a little bit to kind of a mindset I want you to be in, where I got to be. So, you're in New York City. I know some people in New York, so New York's a very busy place. There's a lot of, there's, well, there used to be some homeless people out there, but anyways, you're, you're walking down the street like me. You're walking, and some guy comes up to you, and he's about five feet from you, and he says, you're crazy. You're the craziest person in the world. Now, what would you do if somebody did that to you? Some guy, you know, he's wearing a plaid shirt that looks like it's torn, like like he's a superhero and he tore it off or something. It's all raggedy. And Now, what would you do? I would say a lot of you would get away from this person. You'd cross the street. You'd go to the other side of the street. That's what I would do. A lot of normal people would do that. Now, if the person, say the same person, okay, if you say you worked with this person a year ago and you only knew him for two months at the office, you didn't really know him, you just saw him in the office, you might, now if you saw him out on the street, you might have some compassion for him, right? Because there's some familiarity there. He does the same thing. Hey, you're crazy. You're the craziest person I know. So now what would you do? Would you, would you try to help him or would you still cross the street, go to the other side, get away from him? You guys see where I'm going with this? So now, now it's your narcissist. Now it's the person that love bombed you. Now it's the person that knows you, that got to know you, got to know your weaknesses, got to know your vulnerabilities. And now that same person that says, you're crazy and everything, now they start saying things that affect you because they know you. They know that you're ashamed of your toenails. They know that you're crazy. You got the worst toenails ever. You know, they know that you have issues with your mother. And so they bring that up. You're just crazy. Your mother, you treat your mother bad. Okay. So my point is, that the same thought about getting away from that person is the same mentality you need to go no contact. The same person, and they'll see the only difference is that person that is still, that person still has a personality disorder. They're still being abusive to you and you don't deserve to be abused. But the difference is between the first example that I gave you when you didn't know the person and the example I just gave now where it's your narc is that there's a level of familiarity with there with you there. In other words, the person the person is still the person is still abusive and crazy. The person that the, the person still has issues, but because they know you, you're drawn into it more. In other words, it's not you, it's that person person in New York City you don't know you're gonna get away from you know it doesn't it doesn't affect you and what I'm telling you is that where I'm for so for my example is I actually became a different person so now 
the abusive issues don't work on me. So now when the ex, like a few months ago, tried to manipulate and do things, I wasn't the same person. It didn't make sense. Like she was like a stranger. So you almost become like a stranger to your narc. When you go no contact, when you develop and you get healthier, they don't recognize you. They don't know you. And they will still try the same things. That's what's funny. They'll still try the things like say you had issues with your mother and you resolve those. You don't, you have a, uh, an abundance mentality. You realize that, uh, it, you know, there's ways of things, uh, thinking that you've changed. You've changed your emotional attachments. You've loved yourself now. But I'm telling you, like in a year or two when the narc sees you and tries to abuse you, it doesn't work because again, it's still them. It's still them. In other words, you don't deserve the abuse that you get. They take advantage of your weaknesses. It's like kryptonite with Superman. They bust out the kryptonite. But if you say if you're Superman and you go no contact with Lex Luthor, who has the kryptonite, and then you uh, work on a serum to solve your issues, solve your, um, make it so that you're uh, immune to kryptonite, so that you, kryptonite doesn't affect you anymore. That's what you do when, when you go no contact for a year or two, or a few months, is that you get healthier, you know? And then when you see Lex Luthor and he's all like, kryptonite, you're like, what, what's this kryptonite? I don't understand. You're a little bit odd. I, uh, I didn't mean to bump into you at the mall, but hey, it's good seeing you again, and uh, I gotta run. I got somebody that loves me over here. <laughs> I gotta, you know. Okay, so, do, do you guys see my example? I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but. I'm trying to show you that it's not flipping you. Okay, it's 10% you, but, but they're the ones with a personality disorder. They're the ones that aren't gonna change. They don't change, they really don't. <laughs> they tell you they change. They'll tell you anything you wanna hear. They'll tell you anything to manipulate you. But you'll begin to see the magic tricks after a while. You'll begin to see the rabbits over here behind them. And you'll, be, you'll begin to see that that's just what they got up their sleeve. So I'm going to leave you this one thought. I know there's a bunch of others. I'll comment on your things later. I got to run. But I want to leave you with this map. And some of you guys saw my other video. You know where I'm going with this. This is their map. This is where they're at in their head. Clownfish Cave. Seashore Temple, they create their own world. And if you don't see the world as mangrove forest, as Stingray Bay, if you don't see if you don't see the world like them, they won't let you into their world. And they will go, they will actually abandon you. They'll actually leave you. If you don't play along with the narcissist illusion of how they see themselves, they will leave you. And for some of you, that's scary. But I'm telling you, it could be the best thing. It could be the best thing that's ever happened to you. So anyways, guys, love you. And uh, take care on this Monday. Hope you had a good Easter. If you didn't, it's gone. It's history. It doesn't matter. You can make new ones. There's, a, there's another Easter. There's more Easter's coming out there. There's more people in your life that you can bring in. There's so many more people out there. And don't limit yourself to focusing on the narc. Help other people in this group. There's other people that are going through what you're going through. Some are worse, some are better, but you don't have to be, you don't have to be in any type of abusive relationship ever again if you don't want. All right, love you guys.